When designing and building a tiny house, you have the ability to create a space that perfectly meets your needs. And it never ceases to amaze me just how clever people can be in making that a reality. That is exactly the case with this next very exciting tiny house we're about to visit here in Portland. Hi, Kari, how's it going? Hey, nice to meet you, Bryce. Lovely to meet you. And, oh my gosh, your house looks fantastic. Thank you so much. The parking spot that you found for this house is so great. We are very close to downtown Portland right now, and you're perfectly nestled into this front yard. How did you find this place? So it was really serendipitous because um, this house is actually owned by a dear friend, my friend Tom, and I was traveling and started coming up with the idea of building a tiny house and we had a conversation and I thought, oh my gosh, a house would be perfect on his property, but you don't really tell someone that, right? But 10 minutes later in the conversation, he says to me, Kari, I think you should put your tiny house on my property. So here we are. And what was it that initially sparked your desire to build a tiny house? I went through a divorce uh, about seven years ago. And in the process of going through a divorce, you get that opportunity to sort of relook at your life and reevaluate what's important to you. And I had been an artist off and on my whole life, but really was back burner. And when I had this opportunity to sort of reevaluate what I wanted to do, I wanted to be more creative. I wanted to pursue a more creative life. So what happened is I ended up actually getting laid off from work. And in that process, I got a severance package and I decided to take that severance package and jump, sold everything I owned, um, except for a few boxes in someone's garage. And I went and traveled for 15 months and I blogged and I wrote my way all the way through Europe. In the process, I lived in a lot of small places. One very specifically was this tiny shepherd's bothy on this island off the coast of Scotland in the Inner Hebrides, it's called Iona. I lived there for a couple months and I loved it. And I loved the simplicity. I loved knowing that everything I owned was in this backpack. And I started to think about how I could take that back home with me. And so that was when the idea of a tiny house started to sort of birth in me. And your father is an architect and you designed this home together, didn't you? We did. My dad is a retired architect. So while I was traveling, he started working on some designs. And when I got home, he showed them to me and we started collaborating together. So it was really a, a wonderful time to be able to do something creative together. And I would say 90% of the house is, is his brainchild. And then I got to add in little touches here and there, but it was a really wonderful time to work together on something. And what size is the tiny house? So this is 24 feet long and eight and a half feet wide. It is on wheels, of course, and can be moved anywhere. But I knew that this spot was probably gonna be someplace I would be for a long time. So you can see I've built a deck and it really feels at home here. And tell me about the design of the home. So one of the first things you'll notice is that the exterior is all metal and that was something very purposeful. I really like, as does my father, Larry, we really enjoy streamlined design. And so we really wanted this house to blend into this spot. We knew it would be in the city. And so we wanted it to be a space that people wouldn't necessarily jump out at people. We wanted it to blend into these beautiful trees. And so I chose this chocolate brown metal but I wanted the exterior to really reflect my own taste, which is a modern design. So um, the front of the house, uh, originally we were gonna do panels of wood. And uh, over the course of the design, we decided to use the metal shapes to really kind of create an interesting pattern on the front versus using the wood. Well, from the outside, I think the house just looks so good. I love the way that you've used all metal, but really broken up the lines with everything. And I'm very intrigued to see what you've done on the inside. Can we have a look? Absolutely. Come on in. Thank you very much. This is absolutely lovely. Talk to me a bit about the style and what you've created in here. Yeah, so I'm really inspired uh, by Scandinavian design. I'm actually Danish. And so I love that light wood look. All of the wood in here is Russian birch. It's a, a plywood, like a higher end plywood, and I decided to use that really for everything in the house so that there would be this very consistent look and feel. Because this is all one room 
everything has to play well together. So when I designed it, when I picked the colors, I had a very clear color palette and idea of what I wanted and I really wanted it to feel bright. I knew that I would be spending a lot of time here. I work from home as well as live here. So I um, wanted to be able to have a lot of light and brightness in it. That was very important to me. And so right now we are in your lounge. Yes, and with a lounge, you need to have lounge lighting. So I have LED lighting that we put in underneath the bed space. Lovely. To give it a really nice effect in the evening. All of the space is double function. Most people that do tiny houses have to have storage space. So all of these boxes are storage. So I have my winter clothes, I have my backpacking equipment. In effect, that's my garage. I do have one box that's filled with old picture albums that the projects that you never get to. So I have one box accounting for that. The cushions, everything, all of the upholstery was done by my mom. So it was very much a, a family affair when we did this project. It was really fun to, to get uh, everyone involved. And then above us is your bed, isn't it? It is. One of the things that, as you can relate to, being very tall, the loft option was not a great option for me. I wanted to be able to have a space, a living space that I could stand up in, as well as having a bed that I could sit up in. And that would be a challenge to do a loft space. So this is what we decided on. It lowers with a remote control. I basically take the cushions off of the couch and I can lower the bed. And in fact, I actually have the bed down most of the time. This is sort of my company setting. <laughs> So when I have friends over for drinks or uh, friends over for dinner, of course, I have my lounge space available. But most of the time when it's just me, I, I bring the bed down and I have that bed down almost all the time. How tall are you actually? I am six foot three. Six foot three. So yeah. that is very tall. And definitely having this kind of setup must really contribute to not making this space ever feel too enclosed. Exactly. For me, I knew right away that I was going to have to do something a little bit different. And so this was the solution. And I think it's actually a pretty brilliant one. It certainly is. And then over here we have your kitchen, and I can immediately appreciate this because like you being tall, having raised counters just makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? It absolutely does. So these counters are actually 42 inches tall. A normal countertop is 36 inches, and uh, when I actually go into other people's homes now, the contrast is, is just amazing because I'm so used to now working at a countertop that fits me. And when other people come into my house, it's sort of an Alice in Wonderland experience for them because they come in and the countertop is about up to here on them. And so it's interesting because when I say I live in a tiny house, people step back and they look at me and they kind of look me up and down and they think, you live in a tiny house? And I say, I do, but it's a tall, tiny house. So when they come in, they're like, oh, oh, I get it. It's all designed for you. So that was part of the process that I would be able to contribute those ideas even on the spot as we were building. Absolutely, because you did actually do a lot of the construction in this home yourself as well, didn't you? I did do a lot of the construction. So I hired a contractor and he did all of the framing. And then I didn't quite know what I wanted to do at that point in time, but we got along really well and I really wanted to have my hands in it. So all of the tedious work that goes into a house, the insulation, the sanding, the staining, I did all of that work. My sister actually works in construction, or used to, and she says, you always need 1.1 person on a construction site, and I was the point one. So when he needed someone to hold the other side of the metal, as we were you know, screwing it into the side of the house, I was that person. So it was a super learning process. It was exhausting and as I said at the end, really satisfying. One of the things that I do love to do is tile. And so I did all the tiling in the house and become quite the tile expert. So for me to have picked the design and then implement it is really satisfying. And tell me more about the design of your kitchen here. Yeah, so I have a very simple stove. It's a gas cooktop. Actually, I use propane. So propane powers my hot water and my oven. So this is a, a small um, kind of a half oven as it were so I think I've cooked a cake in there I've done some uh, you know small things but predominantly I use this cooktop the sink is really deep it's quite big and um, that was really important to me too I have a grate in the bottom so actually most of my dishes just dry right in the sink so I don't have to have an additional drying rack and then you've got a table over here as well yeah this is my very multifunctional table so I work at home here it's perfect for two people to have dinner, 
actually you can squeeze three in as well. But it also is very functional in that it can be folded up and put away. So I just take this uh, the table leg and it just folds up here. And then I have a little clasp. I also can just take this chair and fold this up and put this away as well. And I can store it at two places for storage, right here, and then I also can store it in my wardrobe. So when I'm having a party and I have more people in here, this gives a lot more space to mill around, as it were. And then over here we've got your fridge and lots more storage. Yes, yeah, so I decided, because I'm just one person, that I would have a smaller fridge, and this works perfectly for me. So I have a small freezer and plenty of space. One of the things that people comment on here is that I don't have any doors. One of the things that you have to kind of determine when you're designing a tiny house is how much money do you want to spend on all the details. And I could have gone to town on building this very intricately, but I was at the end of my build and I was running out of money. So I decided to just use these wonderful containers from the container store and they've worked great. So I have my pantry here. Right here is a washer dryer. I like the fact that all of this is sort of stored back here and away from the main, the main area of the house. And then over here we've got your wardrobe and that is quite a lot of storage space you've got here. Yes, so I love the idea of having a full-size wardrobe. A lot of tiny homes don't have a lot of storage space for clothes, but it was really important for me to be able to access everything that I have. Here I have my hanging clothes. These baskets act as my clothing drawers, like my bureau. And then right below I have all of my shoes stored. There isn't a lot of room, but it keeps me from accumulating too many pairs of shoes. And then hiding around the corner here, we've got your toilet and basin. This is really nice how this has all been done. Thank you so much. I had debated about whether I wanted to have a basin in the bathroom area, but I'm really glad that I did. And this little basin fits right above the toilet. And then I like the idea of kind of having the mirror kind of come around the side so it gave it a little bit more uh, that reflection feeling of openness. And I love it. It's very small, but it's perfect for me. I kind of call it my makeup cockpit. Fair enough too. <laughs> a little bit interesting that you've chosen not to actually have a door. Yes, yeah, so that is an interesting factor. So this, uh, there's a metal piece up here you can hang a curtain on. And originally I had, all the way back, I had decided to do a glass door. I wanted to have a glass door that would slide here. But first of all, I was again at the end of my build. Glass doors are very expensive. Uh, I had no idea how much they would be. And I realized because I'm the person in the space 99% of the time, I didn't want to close off the space and make this space feel smaller. So I kind of killed two birds with one stone, saved myself some money, and decided to keep this open. Now I had planned to get a curtain. I've been living in this space now 14 months and I never got the curtain. So if someone's here with me and, and uh, they need to use the restroom, if they're uncomfortable, I just send them over to my neighbor's house. Eventually, <laughs> I think I'd like to get a curtain. But no shower in here. Actually, I do have a shower. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you. Oh, that is clever. So one of the things that my dad had discerned while doing his research is the shower is a really unused space as far as square footage. He had seen a similar project on another tiny home, but it was a very small wardrobe that moved in and out of a shower space. And so he thought, let's expand that. Let's make that bigger. So we did. So I have this full-size wardrobe that sits over my shower for the majority of the day. And then I roll it out of the way when I need to use the shower. And I have this really nice open space to use. And then you've got this full curtain that goes around to keep everything dry? Absolutely. So I have an extra wide, extra long curtain that just circles around. Um, and at first I was concerned about water getting on the floor, but I have this little ledge and it works perfectly. And then above us here, it looks like you've got a lot of storage built into a loft. I do. I love this space. Sometimes it's a, it kind of feels like the closet where I just, you know, if I don't know what to do with something and someone's coming over, I'll toss it up there. And the one thing that I save from my other life is a lot of artwork, not necessarily my own artwork, but paintings, things that I wanted to keep. Don't have a lot of display space on the walls. So if down the road I'm not living in a tiny home, I wanted to keep that artwork. So I have that stored up there. And that's the one thing that I don't use that I just have in storage. So you've been living in the home now for 14 months. How is everything working out for you? You know, I love it. It is so satisfying for me to have the space designed exactly as I want it. It makes living here a pleasure. Yeah. What was the budget that was involved in building this home? 
Yeah, so the total from top to bottom, including everything in here, including upholstery, all the wood, everything was 70,000. That included my contractor. I was so uh, thrilled to be able to put my stamp on every single piece of this house, from the design, to the colors, to the shapes of the cabinetry, to the stain color. I had so much fun really overseeing every aspect of this project. And when people walk in, I want it to represent me. And I hope that it does. Having this home really means to me freedom, honestly. I have a greater amount of freedom in my life than I've ever had. Because I have such a low cost of living, I have virtually no costs other than my home. I don't own a car. I have paid off all the rest of my debts. So it allows me to pursue creative projects that maybe won't pay me anything, but are maybe my heart's desire. So some of those things are going traveling and documenting my travels in my travel journal and then writing a book about it. And those books are passion projects. And I really think tiny house living, it frees up space. It just frees up space. It's ironic that the small space is freeing up space. It frees up space in your budget, in your mind, in your way of living. And for me, it was the right decision. Well, this home is just so beautiful. You have done such a great job with the design. I love the way that you've filled it with yourself and your art. And I am sure this is a space that you are gonna be very happy living in. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thanks so much, Bryce. This whole house is just absolutely filled with some really clever design. And what I love about Kari's story is that this is an example of true artful living. Artful living is all about building a space that perfectly encapsulates your life and the way that you want to live. And here in this home, that is exactly what she's done.